For those that are watching and listening and on the internet, welcome. Uh, for anybody that don't know me, uh, my name is Tony Boick. Hello. <laughs> um, I don't, when pastor asks me to do this, as far as get up here, I don't take this lightly. I don't. For a mighty man of God to see something in, in a lost child that came here, got on fire for, for God, and put him in a pulpit to preach to his flock. I don't take that for granted. I'm not perfect <laughs> by a long shot. But this, this word, this word started just cultivating and digging in my spirit. The, the day Pastor Carolyn, we was here in prayer, she asked me to pray and, or asked me if I had something. And as I started, this came out, that one. That one. So you may be sitting there saying, what are you talking about, that one? I'm that one. You that one. You that one. You're that one. You're that one. Every one of us that are sitting right here, right now, and that are watching and listening is that one. I'm going to get to, you, you understand what I'm saying when the Holy Spirit just lets you have it, because this thing is so, oh, uh, I couldn't even sleep last night. The Holy Spirit would just study giving me revelation on revelation on revelation. I needed, what's the, uh, the people in the, uh, in the uh, courthouse doing that? That's who I needed last night. <laughs> that one. Remember when I started coming and pastor was preaching on the, the, the 23rd Psalm, the valley with the shepherd. And all the things that he did and prepared the shepherd. And if you get lost, he had the hook or whatever. But it started reminding me that one. He would leave the 99. Amen. 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 <laughs> he would leave the 99. He would leave the 99 and go for that one. That one. Look at the ones in here. <laughs> Look at all the ones in here. That one. What is so important about that one? You were on God's mind Hallelujah. before you was even formed in your mother's womb. Amen. He knew you and created you. No matter what you was going to do, how you was going to do it, how many times you was going to do it, how many times you messed up, how many times you tried to get it right and couldn't get it right, that one, that one. We are that one. Yes. Pastor, when she was praying, and she said, one to take a, uh, 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 do a thousand, two to take 10,000. God is about multiplication. Amen. One. Amen. Just one. And look at the ripple effect. Amen. Amen. Look at the ripple effect of one. So when you're around in your marketplace, when you're walking your walk, you'll be an example and an ambassador to Jesus Christ, and people, you you like, oh, ain't nothing happening, God. It's not what we. It's not when we wanted to happen. It's when He wanted it to happen. His timing is always perfect. Amen. But here's the thing about time right now, and I said this before, we don't have time to waste time. Look around and see what's going on, church. 
But I might, I, I, I might hurt somebody's feelings right now, and I hope I don't. The church is lukewarm. I'm just, I'm, I'm, the Holy Spirit gave it to me. Hey, uh, don't get mad at me. I ain't talking about a building. I ain't talking about the church building. I'm not talking about a building. The church is lukewarm. Whoo. He said he'd rather be hot or cold. Not lukewarm. Not lukewarm. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. Pastor Paul can preach to us. We can have that fire and anointing on us in this place. But let me ask you something. What's that fire and that anointing once you hit Groom's Road? What's the anointing when you're in traffic? What's the anointing when you're in the grocery store and the lines alone? What's the anointing when you're walking down the mall? Where's that anointing? Amen. Don't play church, be the church. Don't play church, be the church. Now this message is for me too. But we're in an, we're an extension of Harvest Church and Pastor, Carl, and Pastor Paul and Pastor uh, Tabano. So we're an extension. You and I, you and I, us, can reach people they would never be able to reach. All the pastors in the world, everything that we're doing, Lily Valley can't reach people that we can reach. Pastor Bill Whistler, he can reach people that we can reach. Pastor Ted Shuttleworth can't reach. People that they can't reach, that's what we're here for, church. That's what we're here for. We're in an extension of Pastor Paul. We're an extension of heaven. We're an extension of Jesus Christ, an example of somebody that will never see a church or go in a church, but we the church. Amen. We the church. We are the church. Somebody would never read a Bible, but you are the church. They looking at you and I every single day. Is he going to crumble? Is he or she going to crumble? Is he going to curse somebody out? Is he going to do this or he going to do that? We are the church. And even when you don't think people are watching, you trust me, they watching. Because let me tell you something. This whole world is looking for Jesus, but they just don't know it. This whole world is looking for Jesus and just don't even know it. You know how I know? Because I was one of them trying to find it in the club, the drinkings, they were spending their money. That's what they trying to find. They searching something to fill them and it ain't the world, it's the church with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Woo! If you could turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to read it out of the New King James Bible verse. And then we're going to go to Luke chapter 15. It's the parable of the lost sheep, that one. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray and does not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? 
And if he finds it, mm, assuredly I say to you, listen to this now, he rejoices more over that one sheet than over the 99 that did not go astray. Now, when they talk, when I get older, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but just stick with that word rejoice. Let me ask you a question. Like, when, when somebody come here and they give their life and accept, their, accept Jesus Christ and their Lord and Savior, we ought to be running all around this place and trying to hang off the rafters. That's rejoicing. It looks crazy, but it looks lovely to God. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Let's go over to Luke chapter 15. I'm going to start in there first. I'm going to read. I was going to start at three, but I'm going to go out with one. <laughs> now, then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him. <laughs> what did I just say? Everybody is looking for Jesus. Yeah. Tax collectors, sinners. <laughs> so why, so why as a church want to be selective <laughs> who we gonna minister to tax collectors and sinners hmm. and the Pharisees and scribes complain saying this man receives sinners and eats with them <laughs> You go to lunch at work, you see somebody, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to go sit over here, I ain't sitting with that man, I'm going to go ahead and eat my salad. <clears throat> all of us got somebody, we, 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 come on, be honest with yourself. It's all, we all got that one person there, it's at the job or wherever it may be, you see them coming, you could be at Walmart, grocery store, you come down the aisle, you're like, oh, I'm going to go back this way and go this aisle. Come on, yeah, we laughing, but it's true. It's true. It's true. But here he says, then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. People need to hear the gospel. This man receives sinners and eats with them, so he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Now listen to this. And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends, his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joyful in he there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner. Over one. Over one, not a thousand, not ten thousand, one, one. But that one 
minister to somebody else, he gets saved. She gets saved. That one minister to another one, he gets saved. Then they go of one seed. One seed can come an orchard. One seed. One person. One. You be that one. And it ain't all about lip service. It's not. When I first started at my job, I was in a training class, and we had to separate and break out in, in, in groups. And somehow, something, we had to write down, you know, things that we believe in who we are. <laughs> and we shared them in the group. <clears throat> And one of, the, one of the ladies she worked in the school, she, when she read what I wrote, she said, I knew you was a Christian. Never told her. Never spoke anything to her. I just walked the way God called me to walk. Because I walked a totally different walk a long time ago. And the same way I affected people in that walk, I want to affect them even more in the walk with Christ. I, 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 I don't pick and choose what's best for me or good for me in the word of God. I want it all. Amen. I want it all. All of me or nothing. He want all of me or nothing. I want all of him or nothing. Amen. 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 Now, we look at this parable, and uh, it, it's three of them. And when I was looking at it, you got the you got the sheep, you got the sun, and you got the coin. God is teaching these parables to people that are unbelievers. And he's and and it's not like he's doing anything extravagant at all. He just walked and he said he did nothing unless the father told him to, told him to. With that being said, you gotta be in tune with the Holy Spirit. You just can't fly off and do your own thing. You can't. I didn't want I did, trust me. Yeah, all this right here was confirmation from week in and week out. Even to this morning during prayer. Everything was confirmed. I was like, yeah, Holy Spirit, you, you, you on fire right now, as the kids would say while I work. You on fire right now. Y'all heard the story. Pastor told some of his preacher buddies he's going to start a church in upstate New York. And what do you say? The graveyard of churches? Yes, graveyard of preachers. <laughs> I don't see no graveyard in here. <laughs> you, see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? One man. One, took what God told him to do, come to upstate New York, and look at the fruit. One, that one, he was that one. God looked down, said, I need a pastor that will be obedient, that will go up to upstate New York, start a church, that one. That one. That's all it took. But look at the look at the fruit of obedience to step out in faith and do that. When I was looking at the NFL draft, and I'm looking at these young kids, and it's bringing back so mem so many memories when when I was getting drafted. 
And back then, they had 12 rounds, so it was a long, long, long day. But you look at these kids, and you look at these organizations, they looking for that one player, that one player to get them to a championship. All the time, they studying them, they watching them, and they put it, and, and, and the thing about it is, these kids that are, are 20, 21 year olds on that day become a multimillionaire because they were that one for that team. The price that was paid for us to be that one. God looked down at each and every one of us, paid the ultimate price for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, church. Knew everything about each and every one of us. We can't hide nothing. These kids, on the other hand, can sweep some stuff underneath the table that these teams want. But they dig deep now. They do. But the price to be a multimillionaire in one day, the price, the price to have the precious blood come down from his heavenly throne knowing you was going to reject him knowing you was going to crucify him knowing you was going to backslide when you accepted him and he still go to the cross and said that one I can use he ain't perfect he or she ain't perfect but I don't need him to be perfect I just need him to be I just need him to be obedient. I just need him to be, uh, be thirsty and hungry for the things that I want him to do for me. God calls himself the good shepherd. The good shepherd that lays, in, that lays down his life for his sheep. In the Bible, though, they talk about he talk about the sheep and the goats. He said, I lay down my life for my sheep. He still lays it on his life for the goats too, but the goats want to put heads with him. God is not going to mess with our free will. He gave us that. So he ain't going to butt heads with you. If you choose to go one way, that's your choice. What you see standing before here right now was a mess. A hot mess. <laughs> For y'all, I know a lot of you know my, my testimony, but God spoke into a great grandmother that spoke a word into a grandson, which a grandson didn't receive that word. But grandmama continued to speak that word. Even when that grandson was in the clubs and drinking and partying, running 144 miles an hour up and down a highway on a dark back country road, 
who are still seeking God and didn't know it. Because I was looking at it for every money. I was looking for it in fame. I was looking for it in women. I was looking for it in alcohol. Couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Little tiny voice. From a little bitty seed planted by his grandmother. Caught root in my heart. One woman. From one woman who got a word from God and hung on to that thing and wouldn't let that thing go to say, God, no, you told me my grandson was going to be the preacher of this family and I'm not letting it go. One woman. One. Clean me up. Put me back on another team where I had play, I had teammates. I had teammates wouldn't go to any other club unless I was going. We in the locker room after the game getting dressed or whatever. Boy, where you going at tonight? I don't know yet. I'm going wherever you're going, I'm going. So when I got born again, I signed back with that same team, with them same players, but not the same Tony Bowick. <laughs> they saw something different. They was like, wait a minute, he ain't drinking. He ain't listening to all this vulgar music. He ain't partying, but he's still hanging out. You know, we play cars in the apartment or whatever, but he ain't drinking. Like, okay. Un uh, unknowingly, unknowingly, they was in the presence of Jesus. Not, not me. They was in his presence. I didn't get them to try and fester me to do something that I didn't want to do. They just never asked. They just never asked because the simple fact they knew this is not the same guy that was here before. Because of one word from one great, great grandmother changed my whole entire life. Things that I was looking for, things that I was looking for long ago, she already knew, you ain't going to find it. You can keep running. Like I told her, I said, Grandma, I'm having way too much fun. I ain't got time for none of that stuff. She said, you can keep running. You ain't going to find it. You can keep running. You can run all you want. We used to have a saying in arena football, you can run, but you can't hide. It's just way too small. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. You keep running, I did. But you eventually, you get tired. You'll get tired. Trust me, you'll get tired. You don't think it's true? Get on the treadmill and tell you, see how long a minute look when you're running. <laughs> get on that treadmill like, it ain't a minute yet. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Woo, thank you, Jesus. As more of my pastor hanging there, it's fun. Like, ha, ha, I love him. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Ooh. Uh. Man. <laughs> yeah, I say you thought you had me. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you had me. Oh, you thought you had me. You can't praise God and worship God when everything is going right for you and everything is smooth and then all of a sudden you hit a, you hit a big wall or a ditch and you don't know how to praise and glorify God. Through that, you're in trouble. The devil got you. He's going to weigh you down. You keep praising him. Amen. You keep worshiping him. You keep praising him. I got stuff going on. Oh, I understand when pastor, pastor and them talk about stuff they're going through and you, you got to get up here. Woo! If you ain't, ooh, ooh, ooh. Woo! You need to understand that the enemy wants to keep you down, your mouth shut, your praise shut, your, your worship shut, your Bible study shut, you come to church shut. Woo! Absolutely. I won't let the rocks out praise me. I won't. Even if I'm annoying you, don't matter. Not annoying God. You're looking at a man that had a quadruple bypass surgery. Whose heart was so clogged up when they tried to put stents in, they couldn't. And you think I'm going to keep my mouth shut? <laughs> You think I'm going to be quiet? You think I ain't going to say hallelujah? You ain't going to think I'm going to say glory be to God? You ain't going to think I'm going to say whoa when I need to? With a fever that wouldn't pass till I had a shepherd that spoke a word over the phone. Hallelujah. One man yes, who honored God started a church. I became a member, got hooked on the vision for lost souls. And here I am. My fever wouldn't break. It would not break. They give me all kind of meds. I get on the phone with Pastor Paul and Pastor Carol. When I said we got a praying mother, before that phone hung up, you know what came out of my mouth? Woo! <laughs> I 
Now, I, got, I had 92, 93, 96, 91. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor. I could doctor you up on the football field, though, boy, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at me and said, how is he still alive? I know. I, if you really want to know, Doc, I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you. If it had not been for the Lord, you're looking at an imperfect man got hooked on Jesus. Here I am. Romans 1, 1, 6. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. I'm ashamed of how when he protected me and watched over me when I wasn't even thinking about him. I'm ashamed of that. One. That one. After Jesus had did what he did with Lazarus, he's going back and people are laying coats and palm trees. People warm and looking for Jesus. Taking their coats off and they hollering, Hosanna. which I learned means save me now. Save me now, Lord. That's what they said. Hosanna. So you got everybody that just saw and heard behind him. Then you got people in front of him, Pharisees, and they trying to say, where is this Jesus? They looking for him. So the Greeks, or whatever, they're they supposed to be so smart or know everything. Now, you got Peter and all the disciples that are with him, but mostly I'm just, you know, just me thinking that they knew Peter and John and, and the ones that was more prominent. But they went and asked Philip. I'm going to read it for you. They went and asked Philip. They didn't go and ask John. They didn't go and ask Peter. They went and asked Philip. Let's see where I can find that. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it from verse 14. No, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to start at 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches, palm trees, and went out to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who has come, who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on it in a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and they had, that they had done these things. Therefore, there are people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb, raised him from the dead, and bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him. Because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing? Looking, look, the world has done, or look, I'm sorry, look, the world has gone after him. Now, 
there were certain Greeks. People out here are looking for Jesus. The people you work with, that you walk by, and you associate with every day, that you know that's not saved, they're looking for Jesus. Now there was a certain, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the fest, at the feast. They came to Philip. Why wouldn't they go to Peter? Couldn't get to him because he was so close to Jesus. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wished to see Jesus. We wished to see Jesus. It's all about souls. That's the only way I can put it. It's all about souls. We're put here and change and transform to win souls for Jesus Christ. Every day, as best as we can, Whatever God leads you to do, be obedient, and let's populate heaven. We wish to see. This is a Greek. He knew everything, all this philosophy and all this. He wanted to see Jesus. As I get ready to close. When we go, when we used to go to church, and I was I was raised up in a Koji Church of God in Christ, and man, it was all day church. <laughs> Get there for Sunday school at nine. We got prayer. We got testimony service, and we had, then the pastor preached. I said, "It's twelve o'clock." <laughs> Get out at three, be back at seven by the time we get ten o'clock at night. Oh. Eight at church. <laughs> yep. We we have to be accessible with people. So many people, like I said earlier, so many people have been hurt by church members, churches, pastors. But we can't stop. We can't stop being accessible. When you got somebody coming up to you, will you pray for me? Or somebody call you on the phone, I'm going through something, something. Will you pray for me? We got to be accessible. We want Jesus to be accessible to when we pray. Have a spirit of expectancy. That every day, wherever you go, whether you say something, what a handshake, a hello, opening a door for somebody to go into a store, anything that you can in this day and age to show Jesus Christ to the lost world, that are perishing daily. In the beginning, I talk about the church was lukewarm. Search yourself, because the Holy Ghost made me search myself. Search yourself. When we do communion, you got to examine yourself. So examine yourself. I pray this all the time. God, is there anything in me? If there's anything in me that's not of you, please get me to take it out. 
or you take it out or show me. I don't want anything that's not of God in my life anymore. I had enough for the world. I had enough. It was exhausting, to be honest with you. You get tired. It's just draining. It's draining. But if you feel like you're lukewarm in any area of your life, don't leave this place today holding on something that's blocking what God wants to do for you. That's on you. That's on you. We got to be real with ourselves, especially now and this time, because everybody else is fake. Everybody else is fake. Give it to them today. Don't leave this place. Lay it at the altar and walk away. Shake your hand and start laughing. Ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Give it to him. Let him have it. Surrender all. I surrender. That's an old gospel song my grandmother said. I surrender all. I surrender all. 